year I'll be going over making heads up notifications in Flutter. They usually tell you somebody sent you a message no matter where you're at in the app and will usually lead you somewhere when you tap on it. To use these types of notifications in a real world context, such as when a client device receives notification from something like Firebase Cloud Messaging, you parse that incoming data and then present it to the user with something like a heads up display. At the end, I'll show you what an implementation with that looks like, but this video is mainly about setting up the UI for the notification. So let's just get into it. Here I'll be going over making heads up notifications in Flutter. They usually tell you it's, I started a new Flutter project. First things first, hit Control or Command F to bring up the Find menu and enter two forward slashes, a dot, and an asterisk. Make sure the regex button is selected, leave the replace field blank, and replace all. This should delete all your comments. Just go ahead, right click, and then format document. Let me zoom in a bit and I'll hit F5 to run the app. I'll speed this up and when it's finished loading, you'll see the default Flutter app running. Now we're going to clean this up a bit. Under Material App, change Debug Show Checked Mode Banner to False. Get rid of all the title references. Get rid of everything in the increment counter method. Get rid of the counter variable. Get rid of the app bar. And get rid of the child in the center widget. Now control or command S to hot reload and you'll see our updated UI. Make a child within the center. Cut the floating action button and paste it as the child of the center. Delete that floating action button parameter. Right click, format document and then control or command S to hot reload. Change the increment counter method to get notification. Because when we tap on that floating action button, this is what's going to show us our notification. Right click on the lib directory, create a new file called phrases.dart. Here I'm pasting in a list called phrases list that contains numerous strings and these will be the content of our notifications. You can create your own list of strings or you can get my list from my GitHub page. The link is in the description. Create a function that will return a string. I'll call this get phrase. Let's create an int called index which will get a random integer between zero and the length of our phrases list. and we will return a string in phrases list that corresponds to that index. Random depends on the Dart math library, so make sure you import that. You can do that easily by hovering over any word with a squiggly line under it and press control period. Now we'll make the actual notification overlay. Right click on the lib directory and create a new file. We'll call this notification overlay.dart. Create a stateful widget called notification overlay. and import the material package. Create three final variables called entry, message, and subtitle. We'll create a constructor and make all three variables required. Since we'll be using animation to display our notification, we need to add the single ticker provider state mixin. Create our animation offset called position. And our animation controller called controller. Create an init state method. At our super.init state call, we'll call a method called start timer, which doesn't exist yet. Set our controller to an animation controller with a duration of 700 milliseconds. This 700 milliseconds will be the duration it takes for our notification overlay to fully animate to its position. Now set our position variable to tween offset, and we'll begin with an offset of 0 on the x axis and negative 4 on the y. and end with just an offset dot zero. And then we'll dot animate with the curved animation, set the parent to controller, and the curve to curves dot ease out. You don't need to stick to my values here, you can tailor it to your own needs. And then just controller dot forward to start the animation. Now let's create our start timer method, make it void since it won't return anything. 
Now we'll await future.delayed with a duration of 3 seconds. This is how long our notification overlay will stay on the screen before it reverses. Since we're using await, we have to make the method async. Now we'll await controller.reverse. And then after that, we'll do widget.entry.remove. So to summarize, we'll call start timer in the init method. It'll wait three seconds. The animation controller is going to reverse. And then the entry, which is the overlay entry that we passed in, will be removed. Now we'll design our actual overlay entry. Head down to our build method and replace the container with a safe area. Make its child in a line with alignment of top center. make its child a material, and have its child be a slide transition. Set its position to our position variable, and its child a container. Give the container a decoration with a box decoration, with a color of black 87 for some transparency. Set its width to double dot infinity so its width takes up the entire screen. Set its height to 60 for now. Give it a center child and have the child of the center be a column. Set the column's main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot center. As a child of the column, we'll add a text for widget.message that we pass in. As the second child of the column, we'll make another text for just widget.subtitle. For both of these texts, let's make their text align, text align dot center. For the widget dot message text, we'll set the text style and we'll set its color to colors dot green. It's font size to 18 and we're going to set its font weight to font weight dot bold. For the widget dot subtitle text, we'll give it a font color of white and a font size of 14. Add some trailing commas and format document to style it better. Head back to your main.dart file. In the get notification method, create a string called phrase that'll call get phrase. And create an overlay entry called entry. Now define that entry with an overlay entry with a builder of just context. Within that, we'll return a gesture detector with the child of our notification overlay. We'll fill in our required parameters. Our entry will be entry, and our message will be phrase, and we'll set the subtitle to a string that'll just say tap to open. Now below the entry, we'll actually insert the entry with a navigator.of context.overlay.insert our entry. Now let's control or command S to hot reload and tap the button to try it out. If everything is set up correctly, you should see the notification come down and then remove itself. Tapping the notification does nothing right now, so let's set that up. Right click on lib, create a new file, we'll call it inner screen.dart. Make a stateless widget called inner screen. And import the material package. Create a final variable called message. 
and then a constructor that requires this dot message. Now in the build method, replace the container with a scaffold. Give it a general app bar, that way we have a back button. Give the scaffold a body with a center, and then the child of center will just be text for message. Style it with a font size of 24 and a font weight for font weight dot bold. And we'll give it a text align of text align dot center. Now head back to the main dot dart file, add an on tap to the gesture detector. And we'll await the navigator.push to our inner screen. And pass in our message parameter, which is our phrase. Be sure to import the inner screen.dart file if it didn't auto import for you. And since we are using a wait, we have to make on tap async. Make sure all of your files are saved. And once all the files are saved, do a hot restart. Now once the app has restarted, tap the button to get a notification, and then tap that notification. You should be taken to a new screen that displays the message you received. There's one issue here where the app bar on the inner screen does not display until after the notification disappears. To fix that, head back to notification overlay.dart and under material, add a type, which is just material type dot transparency. Save the file, reload, tap the button to get a notification, tap the notification, and you can see now that it's working properly. You can tinker with this as much as you want. For example, if you don't want to set a fixed height for the notification, you can set the height to media query dot of context dot size dot height divided by 12. So the height of the notification will be the 12th of the screen it's on. Or change it to six to make it even bigger. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these heads up notifications that we created are usually used in conjunction with something like Firebase Cloud Messaging. And as you see here, when a message is received on message, the heads up notification that we created would be displayed with the information received from Firebase Cloud Messaging. And that's it. Hopefully this helped you out. Leave any comments or questions in the comments below. Be sure to check out my other Flutter videos, and I'll see you next time.